A new U.S. law gives presidents the power to block Bitcoin. At least that is what they think. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys, wherever you are on this beautiful world, whenever you're watching this video, welcome to the Bitcoin family channel. For the newcomers, my name is Didi. In today's video, I'm going to talk about four amazing Bitcoin charts. I'm going to give you a crypto tip. I'm going to answer one of the questions of the followers. Of course, talk about the news and give you a beautiful inspirational quote to end the video all while wearing this amazing shirt. Run BTC. And yes, BTC needs to run and you can buy this shirt in the Bitcoin family web shop, guys. Now, let's first jump into the news and then into the chart. Bam. So the new U.S. law, guys, that gives the president the power to block access to Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency. Now, first of all, in my opinion, it's impossible to ever block your access to Bitcoin if you hold your Bitcoins and other cryptocurrencies in non-custodial hardware wallets. For example, the Ledger or the Bitbox or any of those hardware wallets, all of the decentralized anonymous like non-custodial wallets that you use, they won't be able to block it because they don't even know that you own the Bitcoins on their wallet. If you store your Bitcoins on centralized AML KYC regulated exchanges like Coinbase in the United States or like Kraken in the United States, yes, then they will be able to block access to your account. But I do believe they need to have a very good reason to be able to do that. But still, that new law is created, of course, under the disguise of protecting the United States people of terrorism. It's not done because crypto is not good. It's done because if they would use crypto for terrorism, maybe they should also block then all the other streams of uh, money, like fiat currency that has always been used for terrorism. Bitcoin is only like 10 years old, so it hasn't been used for terrorism yet. All the funding of terrorism was done by fiat currencies like the U.S. dollar. Maybe you should start to block all those bank accounts of all those people that use it for terrorism. But it doesn't matter under which law they want to disguise it because they won't be able to block any of my Bitcoins as long as I keep them in self-custody. Non-custodial, self-custody, hardware wallet, software wallet on your telephone or software wallet, for example, on your laptop, of which they don't know that you own it and they will never be able to block any access to any of those wallets. It's simple as that. You need to start to educate yourself on self-custody of your Bitcoins instead of keeping them on exchanges like Coinbase or Kraken or any other centralized exchange that you're allowed as a US citizen to store your Bitcoins. Because by now already you don't have access to Bybit, for example, because that's illegal in the United States, but you still have access, for example, to Blowfin. Blowfin, the link is down below. When you sign up to Blowfin, you get a 10% deposit bonus. Plus you can win a shitload of prizes like the Apple Vision Pro or even a Rolex at the moment. So if you are from the United States and you want to have a non-KYC exchange, don't use Bybit, but use Blowfin. Non-KYC, non-questions asked, and you will be able to trade perpetual contracts, etc. And if you're from the United States and you want to really, really, really play it safe, then buy your Bitcoins in a non-KYC OTC, like from your neighbor or from your aunt or from a friend or online, like or meeting people, whatever you want to do in a safe way, buy your Bitcoins, store them on your hardware wallet, nobody knows that you're owning them, and then only trade them through a decentralized exchange like Apex. Apex Pro is the best decentralized exchange of this industry. So then you just connect your hardware wallet to a decentralized exchange and you start to trade. And yes, on Apex, it's the same feeling as you trade on a centralized exchange. You can use leverage, you can do spot trades, you can have different pairs, you can set buy orders, sell orders, all of the normal things you can do on a normal exchange. You can also do on Apex Pro, but on decentralized. You won't be sending your Bitcoins to an exchange. So they will never know that it's your Bitcoins that you're trading or your Ethereum that you're trading on Apex Pro because they are still on your own hardware wallet. That is what I mean with keeping your Bitcoins in self-custodial services like your hardware wallet or any software wallet that you use on your telephone. Don't store them on Coinbase. Don't store them on Kraken. And if you buy them with your bank account, yes, of course, they know that you own Bitcoins. That's why you should be trying to buy Bitcoins of the market, OTC, peer-to-peer, -peer, that's how Bitcoin was intended to be, like from a friend, and just buy them with cash or whatever is possible, still possible. Because in the future, when cash is gone, you won't be able to do that trick anymore. But now, I would suggest that you still buy Bitcoin with cash, withdraw the cash from an ATM, go to a friend, 
buy some bitcoins, hold them in self-custody on a non-KYC hardware wallet. Safest play out there, and they will never be able to block your Bitcoin access. Now let's see how all of this news influenced the Bitcoin price. Let's jump into the charts. Bam. The first chart for today, guys, is the four hour chart. This four hour chart is showing us that there is a candle trying to close above the yellow stepping line. The yellow stepping line is at 71,037. Uh, that candle at the moment is 71,157. So we are trying to close a four hour candle above that. We do see some green already here in the bottom. That's beautiful. But there's still some yellow that should be disappearing and we should have more green. And the blue line needs to above that white line and the white line preferably needs to curl up a little bit. And then that green line here needs to be on top. That would be the perfect combination to take a trade on the four hour chart. Now, if we look at, for example, at the one hour chart, let's see over there, there the trade was already given. So we already had that buy signal over here. Just to show you again how the indicator setup works, we have the buy signal over there. We have a candle closing above the yellow stepping line over there. The blue line is above it over there. The green is starting over there. The blue is completely gone and the green line is here on top. So that's a quadruple confirmation to take that trade. Um, is this a good trade? Yes, I think we could break that top of the Bollinger Band over there, 71,500 and maybe even take it again to that 72K level, which is still the resistance. Uh, and that could be a nice trade on the four hour or on the one hour or even the 15 minute chart if you're trading daily. If we zoom out a little bit, we can see the day chart is just doing what it needs to do. Like I told you yesterday, it could be an inverse head and shoulder pattern with a neckline over there with a target around 90K, between 80 and 90K, let's see like that. It could also be just our escape from this pattern and retest and following this line to around 70k it can be a lot of things at the moment but all of those things are pointing in a direction that bitcoin needs to go up there is a massive 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 resistance at this area the moment we break that resistance it can go really quickly so dollar cost averaging around this area is still a very smart thing to do now if we look to the macd at the bottom yes that is turning green and turning green is positive we had a positive cross. The blue line crossed that red line. So that means there is a lot of power to go up. The RSI is just at that 70 line. We can go higher than the 70 line. We can go to 95, for example, just like we went over there with this run. So all the indicators and charts are positioned well for Bitcoin to do another run from 70K to, for example, 80K. Now, let's keep track also on the Gaussian channel because the Gaussian channel is really nice to use if you start to doubt that the bull market top is in or that you need to take your profits every time in a bull market you can see that that gaussian channel i will start here on the left in 2017 that gaussian channel was important support support we came down but we stayed above it we stayed above it we stay above it the whole bull market and then in the bear market we go into it that is a sign that the bull market is definitely over there will already be signs over here and I have a special chart for the VIPs that they all have access to that is telling them a multiple combination of indicators when the bull market top is in. But if you want to become a VIP, you need to go to the BitcoinFamily.com. But for all the other people, if you add the Gaussian channel, you will always understand that is the moment you need to get out of the market. Here we saw the same. We came above it. We retested that. We stayed above it. We stayed above it. Then when we came in it, you should have known that is the start of the bear market. Of course, we had a second push, but still it wasn't that much more profit and we got into it again, end of the bull market. Here now, we retested it, retested it. We go, we stay above it, we stay above it. We will probably stay above for a very long time. But when we come into that Gaussian channel again, when it goes up like this, and we go in with the price again, you know that is the start of the bear market. And the Gaussian channel will be like this. this will be again the start of that bear market, guys. Simple indicator that all of you can use. Now, let's jump into some more cool charts. This one, for example. This one is uh, the liquidation heat map. On this chart, you can see where the liquidations will be happening. 72K and higher, there's a lot of liquidations going to happen. Here as well, 70,000 and a little bit up, a lot of liquidations going to happen. If you open it long in here, you don't want to be liquidated, you would put your stop loss a little bit lower than all these area. 
yeah, 69,500, for example. Because at the end, you trust that Bitcoin will be going up. So yes, you can be stuck in this trade for a little bit longer. But at the end, it will go up again and you will even take profits. And if you're in a short, then make sure that your stop loss is below these levels because you know you will be liquidated over there, for example, guys. There's a huge area of liquidations. Mostly we visit that price. I'm at the moment in the long. The VIPs are in the long because the signal just flashed. So we are expecting us to go to these levels, 72,500-ish, uh, where a lot of people will be liquidated and where we will be taking profit. In this chart, we can see the global liquidity, the M2 versus the Bitcoin price. We can see that every time when the money is being printed, the Bitcoin price is also going up. When the money starts to be printed, the Bitcoin price is also going up. We just created a new all-time high of the amount of money printed just above the $90 trillion to be exactly at $94 trillion. That's the global liquidity at the moment. The Bitcoin price is at $70,000 US dollar. Now, I believe that we just retested this line with the money supply and we will go up and print some more. So that the global liquidity will go to $100 trillion or maybe $110 trillion US dollar and that will pull up the Bitcoin price as well. Just like it did over there. Look how beautiful. If they start printing, the Bitcoin price goes up. If they start printing, the Bitcoin price goes up. They already started printing, the Bitcoin price went up, but they will continue printing and the Bitcoin price will go up even higher. Now, then we have the Bitcoin US spot ETF balances. In total, also a new all-time high. We are just above 60 billion US dollar in total that all the spot ETFs accumulated in Bitcoin. A little bit above 60 billion US dollar. So there is a new all-time high in the amount of Bitcoin spot ETFs being bought through all those companies that you see above Grayscale, Franklin Templeton, BlackRock, Wisdom Tree, Fidelity, uh, ARK, shares Bitwise, Invesco, Penag, Velkire. The biggest two at the moment are BlackRock and Grayscale. The third place is for Fidelity at the moment, but in total 60 billion dollar worth of Bitcoin accumulated through spot ETFs. Amazing progress, guys. Then we have a very important chart. Because why is my YouTube channel not growing as fast as I expect it to grow? And why is not the retail yet in the market? Because it's shown exactly on this chart. We can see these are all the YouTubers, like all the big YouTubers. Sadly, I am not on this list. Let's make sure I come onto this list as well, because I think I'm way better than most of those YouTubers. But the amount of views of all of these YouTubers over there is calculated. And we can see that when we had, were at the bull market top over there in 2021, in total, we had 4 million views collectively of all these YouTubers. 4 million views. Now, we are again at 70,000 US dollar. We don't have 4 million views. We have not even a million views. We are like around 600,000 views. So, yes, the Bitcoin price is the same level as the previous all-time high, where the YouTube views were more than 4 million, and now we have less than 1 million views. This is a very good indicator that the retail is not there yet. The retail is watching these YouTube videos. It's not all the institutional investors. This is the retail. So the Bitcoin price will go slowly up again to 80K, to 90K, and then we near that 100K, then you will see this amount of views pumping up, pumping up, pumping up to 3 million, to 4 million, maybe even to 5 million views, whatever it will be. But it will be way more than a million views. This is not the bull market. In the bull market, there is euphoria. In the bull market, all the world is looking at Bitcoin and a shitload of people are looking at YouTube. Now, this seems like bear market levels. Look, this is the bear market. This is almost lower than the bear market. The bear market, more people were watching my, the videos than now. So this is a sign that retail still needs to step in. The Bitcoin price needs to rise, 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 and that will also lead to more views, and that will also be an indication, hey, when we see these peaks, haha, <laughs> we know, wow, okay, this is too many people watching Bitcoin, this is your grandma, your taxi driver, the butcher, and everyone else stepping into Bitcoin and talking about Bitcoin as if they know best, that's the moment you need to get 
out. I hope you really enjoy the charts, guys. Yes, short term, beautiful volatility again. Yes, as always, that volatile market is there to trade. And with those trades, you can make some profits. Of course, I'm trading as well, making some profits as well. And to be honest, short term, very beautiful holding around at 71K uh, for Bitcoin, which is amazing, guys. But long term, just zoom out. Look at that bigger picture. And the bigger picture is telling us that Bitcoin is just starting in the second part of the bull market. We're going to go higher and higher and higher the next 12 months. It's going to be bull bullish 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 so don't worry be happy run btc we're going to go to a new all-time high very soon in this year 2024 and yes create a bull market top all-time high in 2025 of course so it's very simple zoom out in bitcoin look at that bigger picture zoom in and out try to enjoy every single minute of the day now let's jump into the crypto tip For my crypto tip today, I'm answering one of the questions. And why am I inside, guys? It's very windy, a little bit cloudy, so I decided to do it inside video today, guys. The crypto tip is all answering one question of one of the followers that you can see over there. Guys, the question was, Didi, the advice of your video yesterday is kind of biting each other because you're saying, one, you should dollar cost average into Bitcoin, two, you should hollow Bitcoin, three, you should take profit. So how can you do all those three things at the same time? This led to me giving you some extra education in this crypto tip. People don't understand how to structure their portfolio. And there is another comment down below that is also saying, yeah, Didi doesn't understand it really well. No, I don't understand it really well. I've been in this industry since 2013 and structuring my portfolio and traveling the world for eight years with five people uh, in a very successful way because I don't understand how to do crypto, guys. Let me be very clear again. Let me give you some education. First of all, I still stand by what I said. Because you structure your portfolio in a certain way that you don't take too much risk. Yes, I do dollar cost average Bitcoin for my long term portfolio. That's my hodl stack. That's my pension fund that will never be sold. That's my long term portfolio. Two, yes, I also have a trading portfolio. So you have your Bitcoins in a different portfolio that you use for trading. What do you do with this trading? For example, you trade inverse perpetual Bitcoin contracts. You would try to multiply your Bitcoins with your trading portfolio, not your hodling portfolio. You don't take any risk with your hodl portfolio. Just your trading portfolio is where you take risk. That's the part. And then, of course, you have still a part where you buy your altcoins, NFTs, meme coins, all of those other things that you can do in cryptocurrency. There's another part of your portfolio. And you try to multiply your Bitcoins by buying and selling all those projects, all those NFTs with profits. And then you exchange them back again into Bitcoin, of which a part goes into your hodl stack and a little part goes into your trading stack. My optimal diversification is around 70 to 80 percent in your hodl stack, around 20 percent in your trading stack, and then 10 percent, for example, your meme, NFT, and all the other projects, um, crypto portfolio. So yes, when you structure your portfolio right, you don't have the risk on your full portfolio. A huge part you hodl, a smaller part you trade, and an even smaller part you use to do investments in, for example, high risk assets like meme coins or NFTs. That's how you should structure your portfolio. It's not 100% and then sometimes this and sometimes that and then 100% there. And then that's like the most stupid way. So the comment down below my video made me understand that not everyone understands this yet. So my crypto tip for today, always structure your portfolio. Determine how much of your portfolio will be long-term hodling, for example, 70% long-term storage, 20% in your trading portfolio, that's the only portfolio you use for Bitcoin trading, the Bitcoin pair, like you're trading Bitcoin inverse or you're trading Bitcoin perpetual, like USD, BTC, whatever you prefer, but that's 20%. And that other 10% you use for the higher risk uh, investments in, for example, NFTs, meme coins, or any other crypto project. 
That is how you structure. So that's how at the same time you dollar cost average your Bitcoins because you buy Bitcoins at certain levels of your salary or whatever comes free every month. Then you start to hodl those Bitcoins, of course, in your long term stack, which is also very important. And then at the same time, you need to take profits now and then on your Bitcoin trades, but also take profits, of course, on your altcoin trades or NFT trades. Those profits you will convert again to those first two categories dollar cost averaging or for example for the bitcoin trading again it is simple as that so that's my answer to your question i hope you understand now what i mean every time in a video when i say yes you should be dollar cost averaging yes you should also be holding and yes you should also be taking profits because you're taking profits on all your trades not on your huddle stack and to answer that comment down below that comment yes of course at the bull market top a huge part of your bitcoins can be exchanged into stable coins to be able to buy more Bitcoin back at the bottom. That's one option. The second option is that you start to short Bitcoin at the bull market top with an inverse perpetual contract or a perpetual contract. And then you stay in Bitcoin and you short Bitcoin all the way down to the bear market. So you multiply your Bitcoins by going short. For me, the safer play is exchanging them against stable coins, taking a rest for 12 months and then buy them back again for stable coins because shorting, of course, is always a risk that we get a bounce and then you liquidate it and you lose all your profits. So by answering those two questions, I gave my crypto tip for today. Then answering another question of one of the followers, that one is, Didi, do you believe that these four-year cycles will change because of the spot ETFs, because of the type of people that are now investing in Bitcoin? I think people still need to realize and understand that the spot ETF is not like a company that buys Bitcoin. The spot ETF is a company that is buying Bitcoin for their clients. So for me or for you, for example, you will go there and tell them, here is 100k, start to dollar cost average into Bitcoin, and you hold those Bitcoins for me. And when there is profit, you cash the profit and you send me back that profit. That's what a spot ETF is doing. It's not a company that has like control of all the Bitcoins and determines when to sell and when to buy. It's always the people that just buy a spot ETF at those companies and hold their Bitcoins there. So that's the first thing that you need to understand. Now, the second thing is, yes, the spot ETS will give access to a lot of people all over the world, because by now we have a spot ETF in the United States, in Canada, in Hong Kong. We also have Australia and we have Thailand by now. I think even the Netherlands has an official spot ETF. So in all those countries, all the institutional investors, all the people and companies that uh, invest in assets, through an official way, through the banking way, they now all get access in a very safe way to Bitcoin, which has the possibility of bringing more liquidity into the market. But you also need to realize that a lot of those people already bought Bitcoin in non-KYC ways on exchanges, for example, on Bybit, by using my link, or Blowfin by using my link. But now maybe they are selling their Bitcoins on those exchanges to be able to buy Bitcoin now through a spot ETF, which I would have never done, but some people choose to do that. Because most people don't really trust this crypto industry yet. They are still like, let's buy it through an official company that is very safe. And then when the banks start to offer the possibility to buy and sell Bitcoins in their trusted banking app, a lot of people will use that way to buy Bitcoins. Of course, that is not really Bitcoin because you won't be able to send them outside and use them for everything that you want and it's fully regulated AML, KYC. So for me, that's not Bitcoin anymore. But I know that 80% of the people is waiting for that kind of solutions because they are too afraid uh, that this Bitcoin company, like for example, Kraken or for example, Bybit is not safe. So yes, it will draw more liquidity to the market, but it also will take away liquidity from the normal retail investors. So on average, I don't think it will be influencing the four year cycle too much. Yes, it could lead to a little bit higher high, a little bit more explosive blow of top because there is a shitload of liquidity coming into the market. But it also could mean that as long term investors with a completely different mindset than the retail investors like us in 2017, and that is holding their Bitcoins for the long term. So the crash in the bear market will be less deep. So there's a lot of possibilities, but I don't think it will change the four year cycle in timing. At the halving, there will always be a bear market of 12 months, creating a bear market bottom. Then after a couple of months, we will start to run up to the halving, you know, from that bottom to the halving going up. And then from that halving, again, 16 to 17 months to this new all time high bull market top. 
And from there again, a 12-month bear market. From there again, a bear market bottom. From there again, sideways moving up to a halving. And from there again, to a bull market top. And then again, a 12-month bear market. So the timeline of the cycle is not going to change. The volatility of the cycle could be changing if those people that buy Bitcoin through a spot ETF are really a little bit more intelligent people that huddle Bitcoin for the long term instead of taking profits, selling Bitcoin and all that stuff. You know, we don't know yet. It's the first cycle that we have spot ETS. It's the first cycle we have real institutional adoption. It's also the first cycle that we still have countries accumulating Bitcoins, uh, companies accumulating Bitcoins, us normal retail investors accumulating Bitcoins. So that's the first cycle that we will see the result of the conversion from normal investors, retail, the cowboys and the Indians of the industry into institutional investors with the suits that want to buy it through a regulated service as a spot ETF. And we will see what it will do. But it will not change the four-year cycle, in my opinion. We will still have the same amount of blocks to the halving and to the bull market top. And we will still see a bull market top and a bear market. But maybe, maybe this cycle is an explosive one because of all that new liquidity coming to the market. Now, that was my answer to your question. Hope you enjoyed it. If not, let me know in the comment down below. The last part of the video, guys, is of course the inspirational part. The inspirational quote for today is, you can, you should, and if you're brave enough to start, you will be able to achieve the goals that you set in your life. The most important part of that quote is, if you are brave enough to start, you need to start somewhere. You can't start at the top, you will probably start at the bottom, but you need to see that start at the bottom as a beautiful adventure into running into that top. It's simple as that. Everyone needs to start to believe you can. Everyone needs to start to believe they should. And everyone needs to start to understand that if they are brave enough to start, at the end they will achieve their goals. Whatever goal that might be. It can be a small goal, it can be a big goal, but it all starts with those three steps. Believing that you can, understanding that you should, being brave enough to start, and then at the end you will have that success. And again, the goal can be small, like starting to go to a gym, or the goal can be a little bit bigger, switching your job, or the goal can even be way bigger, like changing your complete life by selling everything and going all into Bitcoin. But all of those goals, even if they are tiny or if they are massive, they depend on those three steps. You need to start to believe, you need to understand you should, and you really need to be brave enough to start. If you have those three, everything will happen in the end the way you expect it to go. And if it doesn't happen the way you expect it at the end, you can always change back or again do the same thing for a new adventure. Again, believe that you can overcome that issue that we ran into. And then again, understanding you should overcome that issue that you ran into. And then again, being brave enough to take steps to overcome that issue that we ran into. And at the end, you will again succeed in that next step. And not every step will be a success. It is not necessary to be a success. It's necessary that you learn something from all those steps. You educate yourself about life, about yourself by running into a ball or a dead end. Running into a dead end is just an amazing moment, amazing place to turn around. Of course you can see it as, oh, it's blocked away, the street is the dead end, yeah. Oh, ah, this is a beautiful time to turn around and go into a new path and create a new path and create a new adventure. And how do you do that again? By starting to believe that you can and then of course understanding that you should, you really need to understand, yeah, I should change, you know? It's not like that other people tell you, oh, yeah, maybe you should change. No, you need to understand yourself. I should change. And then at the end, you need to be brave enough to take that first step, that start. You need to start running, just like Bitcoin starts to run. Run BTC. You need to start running. And then when you have started, you will at the end achieve those goals, guys. In my opinion, it's as simple as that. But who am I to tell you that's very simple? Because I don't know in which kind of position you are. Maybe you're in a very difficult position financially, or maybe you're in a very difficult position, whatever it might be, guys. Maybe you have somebody at home that is very sick that you need to take care of. But still, whatever it is, in all those positions, whatever excuses you have, you are still able to believe you can change, you will still be able to understand you should change. And you, there is always the possibility to be brave enough to start that change. And when you take those three steps, you will be able to change. 
in whatever position you are, guys. It's simple as that. In my opinion, it's just following those three steps, guys. Now, that was everything for today. I hope you really enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up, share with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment down below. What do you think about the charts? What do you think about all the tips? What do you think about this end of the video? And what are your weekend plans for this weekend? What are you gonna do? Let me know down below what kind of fun are you gonna have in this weekend? I will do a Dutch AMA on Saturday morning. There's a special video going live on Sunday, I think. That one was created by the kids, really cool one. And maybe even doing English AMA tonight or on Sunday as well. So yes, for me, it's a weekend full of work, but I love what I'm doing, so I will keep doing what I'm doing, guys. Thank you for watching. I wish you an amazing Friday and see you tomorrow again. Bam.